Good day. Welcome to online class of CES 425 Civil Engineering Material. In this chapter, we are going to learn about the design of concrete mixes. At the end of this chapter, the students should be able to design the normal concrete mix with specific requirements. Before we go to the procedure of concrete mix design, let's us do some recap on the basic components of concrete. Concrete is made up of three basic components, water, aggregate, and Portland cement. Water. Function of water in concrete mix is to enable the chemical reaction so that the concrete becomes stiff, hardened and achieve the strength of concrete. Water is also used for lubricating purpose of the mixture of aggregate and the cement to facilitate the process of placing. Water used for concrete mixing must be clean, free from oil, free from any impurities and fit for drinking purpose. This is to ensure the concrete mix gain the specified strength. Salt water cannot be used in the concrete mixes because the sulfate would damage the reinforcement bar inside the concrete elements. Cement Cement, usually in powder form, acts as a binding agent when mixed with water and aggregates. Cement fills the void between fine and coarse aggregates particles to form a compact mass. There are many types of Portland cement to suit with the construction purpose. The commonly used is ordinary Portland cement. Aggregate Aggregate is solid material which play no part in the chemical reactions that cause the concrete set. Aggregate function as mass particles to resist action from applied loads, abrasion, and percolation of moisture and also the action of weather. Aggregate also function to reduce volume changes resulting from setting and hardening of concrete. Aggregate can be divided into two, which are coarse and fine aggregate. Coarse aggregate can be categorized as crushed or uncrushed stone, rock, or gravel, having standard sizes between 10 to 40 mm of diameter. Fine aggregates are essentially any natural sand particles from the land through the mining process. Fine aggregates consist of natural sand or any crushed stone particles passing the 9.5 mm sieve, almost entirely passing the 4.75 mm sieve, and predominantly retained on the 75 micron sieve. For increased workability and for economy as reflected by use of less cement, the fine aggregate should have a rounded shape. The purpose of the fine aggregate is to fill the voids in the coarse aggregate and to act as a workability agent. The strength of the bond between aggregate and cement paste is depend on surface roughness and surface porosity of the aggregate. Aggregate with rough and porous texture increase the bonding between aggregate and cement, may increase in compressive and flex ural strength compared to smooth surface aggregate. Aggregate with polished surface have less bonding with cement paste compared to those with rough surface. Aggregate with more angular surface would have large surface area and greater the bonding will be. Finally, the admixture. Admixture is counted as the additional material in concrete mixes. The admixtures are used in the concrete mix design when they have to solve certain concern pertaining the cost of construction, to achieve certain properties effectively or to maintain the concrete quality throughout the process of mixing, transporting, placing and compacting of concrete. What's the difference between cement, concrete, and mortar. Cement. Cement is a fine powder that hardens when mixed with water and is used in many building mixes. Cement is a binder. Similar to flour in a recipe, the purpose of cement is to hold the other materials together. But you can't just use cement alone. You need the other materials and what you mix with the cement will determine the final product. These are ground into a powder and gypsum is added, creating the gray flour-like substance known as cement. When water is added to cement, it triggers a chemical process that allows it to harden. There are many different types of cement, but the type most commonly used in construction is Portland cement. Concrete Concrete is a composite of aggregate, cement, and water. The aggregate gives the concrete its mass, and the water activates the cement holding it all together. What proportions of the mix will determine the strength, resistance to freeze and thaw, workability, and how long it takes to harden? Because it needs a low water to cement ratio, it is much thinner when mixed, making it difficult to use as a bonding element. 
Concrete is used in structural projects and is often reinforced with steel rebar to maintain its structural integrity as the soil beneath it settles. It is best used for support, such as beams, walls, or other building foundations. Mortar Mortar is used to hold building materials such as brick or stone together. It is composed of a thick mixture of water, sand, and cement. The water is used to hydrate the cement and hold the mix together. The water to cement ratio is higher in mortar than in concrete in order to form its bonding element. When mixed, it is a much thicker substance than concrete, making it ideal as a glue for building materials like brick. Types of concrete mixes for structural usage. Number 1, normal performance concrete. A normal performance concrete mix has a performance strength ranging between 20 to 40 MPa. Normal performance concrete has good workability if all of the mix ingredients are in accurate proportions. When freshly mixed, the concrete must be plastic or semi-fluid so that it can be molded. Number 2, high performance concrete. A high performance concrete mix has a performance strength above 40 MPa. The main purpose of using high performance concrete is to reduce the weight, creep, or permeability issues, and to improve the durability of the structure. Like the normal performance concrete mix, this mix must be plastic or semi-fluid when freshly mixed so that it can be molded. Why do we need to carry out the concrete mixes design? Number 1, the key to good quality concrete are the raw materials used to make concrete and the mix design as specified in the project specifications. Number 2, benefits of concrete mix design is that it provides the right proportions of materials, thus making the concrete construction economical in achieving required strength of structural members. Strength and durability of the concrete mix design are dependent upon the following factors. Number 1, grade designation, concrete strength is measured in Newton per millimeter square or megapascal when subject to test after curing in any curing medium. The choice of concrete grade depends on its usage. Number 2, choice of cement, cement choice varies depending on usage. The cement should be tested for performance required by their usage before being tested in the design mix. 3. Choice of aggregate size. Aggregates needed for each mix is dependent upon the physical properties needed for the design. All aggregates must be quality sized before use. 4. Type of water. Any water used for concrete mix design should be tested before use to ensure it is within the range of water required for concrete. Most all consumable water is good for concrete work, but should still be tested. 5. Water to cement ratio. The ratio of water to cement should be tested for consistency, initial and final setting, soundness of the cement, workability, slump of the concrete and compacting factor. 6. Workability. This is the measure of ease of mixing concrete without segregation or bleeding. It mostly depends on the design slump of the concrete. 7. Durability. This is the measure of the required strength, Newton per millimeter square, of any concrete grade after 28 days of curing. Durability should be control tested on site. There are two common testing on concrete mix. Firstly, slump test or slump cone test. The slump test is to measure the consistency of fresh concrete before it sets. It is performed to check the workability of freshly made concrete, and therefore the ease with which concrete flows. It is used, indirectly, as a means of checking that the correct amount of water has been added to the mix. It can also be used as an indicator of an improperly mixed batch. The standard code of practice for slump test are ASTM C143 in the United States, IS-1199-1959 in India and EN-12350-2 in Europe. The figure shows tools and equipment used for slump test. We need non-porous base plate, hollow slump cone with 10 cm diameter on the top and 20 cm diameter on the bottom, a ruler, and 16 mm diameter tempying rod to do the slump test.
Figure 1 shows the procedure of slump test, the steel slump cone is placed on a solid, impermeable, level base and filled with the fresh concrete in three equal layers. Each layer is rod 25 times to ensure compaction. The third layer is finished off level with the top of the cone. The cone is carefully lifted up, leaving a heap of concrete that settles or slumps slightly. The upturned slump cone is placed on the base to act as a reference, and the difference in level between its top and the top of the concrete is measured and recorded to the nearest 10 mm to give the slump of the concrete. Figure 2 shows the result of slump test. When the cone is removed, the slump may take one of three forms. The measurement is taken between the top of the cone and the top of the concrete after the cone has been removed. First form is true slump. In a true slump the concrete simply subsides, keeping more or less to shape. Secondly, shear slump. In a shear slump the top portion of the concrete shears off and slips sideways. The shear slump indicates that the result is incomplete, and concrete to be retested. Thirdly, collapse slump. In a collapse slump the concrete collapses completely. This is an indication that the water cement ratio is too high, which is the concrete mix is too wet or it is a high workability mix, for which a slump test is not appropriate. Another one is zero slump or no slump at all. Zero slump is the indication of very low water cement ratio, which results in dry mixes. These type of concrete is generally used for road construction. Bear in mind that, the true slump is the only slump that is valid and can be measured in the test. Another common testing for concrete mix is the compressive strength test. Compressive strength test is a mechanical test on concrete cubes, measuring the maximum amount of compressive load a material can bear before fracturing. Compressive strength is the ability of material or structure to carry the loads on its surface without any crack or deflection. The test piece, usually in the form of a cube, prism, or cylinder, is compressed between the platens of a compression testing machine by a gradually applied load. Concrete compressive strength for general construction varies from 15 MPa to 50 MPa and might be higher. Compressive strength of concrete depends on many factors such as water cement ratio, cement strength, quality of concrete material, quality control during production of concrete etc. American Society for Testing Materials ASTM C39-C39M provides standard test method for compressive strength of cylindrical concrete specimens. How the concrete cubes are made. The concrete is poured in the mold and tempered properly so as not to have any voids. After 24 hours, these molds are removed and the cubes are put inside the water tank for curing process, up to 28 days. After 28 days, the cubes are tested using the compression testing machine. The cubes are tested until the maximum compressive strength and the surface crack is visible. Once the machine stopped, the monitor will show the maximum compressive strength value achieved by the concrete cubes. The value of compressive strength of the concrete cubes at 28 days must be same or greater than the designed characteristic strength, so that the concrete mixed is approved. The concrete mix design should comply with the British Department of Environment DOE, Design of Normal Concrete Mixes, 1988. There are two types of design which are unrestricted and restricted design. Unrestricted design mean no specification for maximum or minimum cement content and no previous data which affecting the design mix. Meanwhile, restricted design means the mix needs special requirements such as maximum water to cement ratio, or maximum or minimum cement content. In order to clarify the sequence of operation, and for ease of reference, the flow process is divided into five stages. Each of these stages deals with a particular aspect of the design and ends with an important parameter or final unit proportions. Stage 1 deals with strength leading to the free water to cement ratio. Stage 2 deals with workability leading to the free water content. Stage 3 combines the results of stages 1 and 2 to give the cement content. Stage 4 deals with the determination of the total aggregate content. Stage 5 deals with the selection of the fine and coarse aggregate contents. Finally, 
Determine the proportion of mix quantity per meter cube and the trial mix proportion depends on the volume of the concrete specimens. Before we go to the next step, it is compulsory for you to have the mix design appendix and form in Microsoft Word format, should be given by your lecturer. You also need calculator and stationaries. You can always refer to the British Department of Environment, DOE, Design of Normal Concrete Mixes, 1988